Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Scrapman, bringing you another episode of Trail Makers, and today we're going to be attempting to build something along the lines of a river paddle boat. One of those types of boats that have the big wheel of paddles in the back that kind of propel it through the water. And the reason why we're doing that is because ever since they had put these... Where are they? Where Where's the paddles? Ever since they put these paddles in the game, I wanted to use them and we haven't actually used the paddles yet. They're specifically designed for water movement. So we're just gonna test uh, how effective these things are. Now, thanks to my extensive knowledge on these river paddle boats, I am aware that there's one thing that they all have in common and that is lots of paddles, which is why we're gonna be using this particular object here. I do not have an extensive knowledge of river paddle boats. I'm just kind of winging it here or am I paddling it here? If I was winging it here, we'd be using these. Haha, <laughs> puns. Okay, let's not do that anymore. So I figure a good way to start is let's save the paddle for last. Let's first make a functional floating platform that we can use as the base for our boat. So I'm just gonna hop in over the water here and we can build in the water now. So this shouldn't be too hard. Let's just uh, build ourselves. We're gonna be using the pontoons and stuff, obviously. Where are the pontoons? Here's the pontoons. I'll probably use like a bunch of medium pontoons, I guess. I'll try to like cover them up so we can keep them relatively uh, hidden because I don't think the pontoons have that great of a aesthetic when it comes to building a paddle boat, but uh, I'll see you when I finish. All right, so here we have the start. It's super basic. I'm just going for basic because I want to focus more on the actual mechanism because I don't know how much trouble the mechanism is going to give me, but it floats really well. We got a seat on it. We can hop on in. And now all I'm going to do is just put a bunch of paddles in the back here. I hope I left enough room. We might have to widen this thing, which wouldn't be too difficult. We just gotta, whoa, this thing is rocking. We're rocking the boat here. We might actually want to put some more weight on this thing. Let's see what happens. Why is it rocking so much? This would be the most nauseating boat ever. It's like the, the water is like so calm and this boat's just like, <laughs> all right, well, um, I'm just gonna put the paddles on it and we're gonna see how that affects things before we start making other adjustments. All right, here is the first prototype, ladies and gentlemen. I think it looks pretty good. I mean, the paddle... Oh, I, my railings aren't even attached at the back. But uh, ignoring that, the, I think the paddles look pretty good. So if I press W and S, we should be able to go forward and backwards. Oh. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. That looks good. This is actually working pretty well. It has, like, a weird effect, though. I might want to switch out those... Um, the rotating, what do they call? Is that the rotating servo? Yeah, I might want to switch out the rotating servo for the spinning servo because this one behaves kind of weird. But let's just experiment with it. Let's boost the speed up to two. It's gonna be twice as fast now, and we're gonna see how this. Well, that's an unexpected result. What? 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 <laughs> I think the rotational force might be dipping us underwater a little bit. So some of, this is so weird. Why do things like this happen? But I think it might be a little bit too far below the surface of the water so that um, more of the paddles are coming in contact with the water at one time, kind of negating the effect or sometimes even reversing it oddly enough. So I bet if I take this exact mechanism here and I just move it up by one block, can I select just that? Oh, that was perfect. Can I move it up? That, I, that was the nudge feature. That was supposed to nudge it by one block. Oh, okay. All right, so apparently the nudge, I can't, I can't nudge it by one block. We'll have to do it manually All right there. We go, I think that's it. All right, that's moving it up by one block. Now let's see if this works better. Oh, we can see it's starting to work but I think it needs to be even higher. Oh wait, no, there it goes. There it goes, we evened out a little bit, all right. And it does seem to be going a little bit faster. Okay, so now I wanna try this. Uh, I'm gonna save this as a prototype and now let's try it with the spinning servo, see if we can get it to go faster. All right, so now the issue with the spinning servos compared to the rotating servos is the size. Because if you look, if I put them next to each other, you can see that the spinning servo takes an extra block as opposed to the rotating servo. And we're probably going to have to mount this higher as well. So I'm going to move it up a block. Oh, oh, I'm trying to move it, I'm trying to just nudge it in here, but it doesn't seem to want to, doesn't seem to want to do it very easily. But actually, you know what? This is actually, this is kind of working. It's attaching to the railing and it's a perfect fit pretty much. All right, let's see how this feels. I just gotta, I just got the rotations and we should be good. Oh, this is actually surprisingly slow. Why is that so slow? 
I don't know if they're fighting against each other. Because for some reason, when I click on these ones, it doesn't give me the red and green arrows to tell me what direction is rotating where. So let's just... Ooh, this can go up to 10 speed. 10 speed? All right, let's just max it out. We're just going to max it out to 10 and see what happens. <gasps> I think... Uh, I think 10's a little much. Might be just a little much. Here, let's... That is so much force. There's no way. There's no way we can keep ourselves upright with that. All right, you know what? I'm gonna actually put some weights in the front here. We're gonna take some of these off, some of these pontoons. We're gonna take some of our, what is it? 100 kilogram, no, 50 kilogram weights. I'm gonna put a couple of 50 kilogram weights right up in here. Add another 200 kilograms to this thing. Let's see how it floats, if it even does. I mean, I'm assuming, oh, wow. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, that was a lot more weight than I thought it was going to be. I don't know why I thought we would be able to float with that, but apparently not. Let's try half that. See if this works any better. Are you really going to flip us over? Wow, these things are pretty heavy, I guess. All right, let's go with the 30 kilogram ones instead. Instead of 100, let's try um, 60. Just stay floating. Okay, there we go. That's good. All right, now let's see. Let's see how this does. Oh, that's still way too much. Way too much. Oh, no. Look what we can do with this. Oh, man. All right, we're definitely going to need some more adjustments. All right, so I'm just going to litter the back of this with just a bunch of small pontoons. Just anywhere I can fit them, pretty much. All right, so we got a bunch of pontoons in the back. What I also need to do is add some steering to this thing, but we need to get it into a uh, drivable state first. And this is not a drivable state. So we might need to just... Might need to cut our losses with the speed and find an appropriate speed rather than just maxing it out outright because uh, that torque is just, that's just overkill. But I'm gonna add some steering to the back here. I'm hoping, actually, you know what? Before we add steering, let's just find an acceptable speed to even test the steering with first because if we can't go, how are we even gonna, how are we even supposed to test the steering? So let's go with 2.5 because the rotating servos were able to do two. So I'm wondering if 2.5, okay, that's not bad. However, we are not really going anywhere. Is it because they're not touching the- they might not be touching the water enough. I guess let's do an experiment and put it down a little bit, but we can't. All right, I think I managed to move it down by one. I'm also- oh, that's not back one. Oh, now I can't move it back in. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, there we go. I'm moving it down by one and back by one. We're gonna lose some pontoons, but that's okay. There they go. And uh, now let's see if this just makes us go any easier. Oh, yeah, that is so much better. Look how much faster we're going. So they just need to be able to hit the water at an appropriate level. That was the issue that we were having. So now let's keep increasing the speed by a little bit. We're going to go up to four. That might be a little extreme, actually, but let's just see how it works. Okay, now it's fighting. Now it's fighting with itself. Yeah, you're, it's really sensitive to where the pontoons come in contact with the water. If you just go a little bit too low, it's gonna reverse you. And it just doesn't know what to do at this point. All right, so clearly four is too much. Let's go with uh, 3.4. All right, all right. That seems to be working really, really well. And you know what? We might be able to get more speed. We're going 20, 20 kilometers, 21 kilometers max at this speed. Does does reverse give me the same speed? No, no, it doesn't. The center of torque is just different in, re in relation to the direction of movement. So it's just, it's just not as easy. Because when we go forward, the center of torque wants to actually pull our back end into the water, which is giving the paddles more, uh, more surface area to hit the water with. But when we go backwards, the torque wants to pull the back end out of the water, which makes our paddles not really hit the water as, as efficiently. What we can do is uh, we can just cut this whole thing in half and we can just double the size of the entire paddle and then we can get more forward speed with the same rotational speed because there's gonna be more paddles uh, resisting against the water. So let's give that a try. All right, so here it is. We have doubled the number of paddles. So hopefully we'll be able to go a lot faster. I'm keeping everything else the same. The speed is the same. We were going 21. Okay, this is not the result I expected at all. We're going slower now. Why would that be a thing? We have literally twice as many paddles now. Twice as many paddles. Come on. 
All right, yeah, so it appears that having twice the amount of paddles in the water does nothing to uh, increase our speed. In fact, we're a little bit slower, which I think is due to the increased weight of expanding our craft, not the increased paddles. So that actually makes me curious. If I was to just keep this and then just delete some of these paddles. Here, I'm going to save this first. I'm going to take it down to just one series of paddles. And I'm going to see if it makes us go the same speed or not. Because right now, this is not making any sense to me whatsoever. All right, so if this makes us go 20 kilometers an hour, there's something wrong with physics. All right, here we go. All right, well, it's turning us because it's... What? It's literally the exact same. Literally, it gives us the exact same speed. But you know what? This just gave me an idea. This just gave me an, this just gave me an interesting idea. Okay. I'm going to actually make a different style of paddle boat here because this is slightly to the right of our center. And you can see as we go forward, it turns us slightly to the left. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete the center of this. So I'm going to have one set of paddles on the right side, one set of paddles on the left side. They're going to be independently controlled. And if I do one of them, I'll go, I'll turn one direction. If I do the other one, I'll turn the other direction. And then that'll give us steering. So we're going to have a different kind of concept here, which will add some kind of uniqueness and originality to it rather than just being a standard paddle boat. Because now that we know for some strange reason, one set of paddles is just as efficient as four sets of paddles, we could just mess around and do this. And I'm actually going to add a logic system that will hopefully enable me to be able to control them using normal WASD controls. So if I press W or S, both will go forwards and then backwards. And if I press A, the right one will go forward and the left one will go backwards. And if I press D, it'll be the opposite. So I think we can set up some logic that will enable us to use that. All right, so I set up a logic system. So now it should just work accordingly. So we should have forward, we should have backwards, we should have left. That seems to be working. We should have right. And that seems to be working. All right. And I'm thinking that those cones that I put in there were not a good idea. They just seem to be colliding. So let's just get rid of those. All right. So now let's give the thing a try. And what? What? I haven't... I haven't changed anything other than put the logic on there. The speed is exactly the same. Wait, have I even tried this thing since I used just the two of them? I might not have. Let's just find a nice healthy speed. Maybe... Alright, that's working. And I'm going to try to turn left. Oh, wow. Look at that. A sharp turn left. Alright, now I'm going to go forward. Sharp turn right. So that's cool. Now, if, I, if I'm holding W and then I press A to turn left... You can see it kind of keeps me turning left while still going forward. The le the other spinner just kind of stops spinning. It cancels itself out. But if I let go of W and then press left, it they both spin in reverse directions, which is basically like tank steering now. So that's actually super cool that that works that way. And so we, we go forward. Oh, no, forward, please. It's really, really finicky with how much it goes above or below the surface of the water, though. All right, I'm wondering if there's if there's any way I can add more flotation. Oh, I can. I have this whole center area now. I can add a whole thing of flotation right in the back here. All right, this should give us a lot of extra buoyancy. Oh, and I can even add a little bit over here on the sides with the single, the single, uh, what do you call them? I was going to call them Floatrons from Islands of War. They're not Floatrons. Uh, pontoons. That's what they are, pontoons. All right, so let's see how this works now. Come on. Come on, there we go. There we go. All right, and forward. All right, apparently these aren't the best either. So I guess we'll just we'll just make this we'll just give it some space over here and uh, see if that helps. I'm going to have to cut down on my pontoons though in order to give them their space. Let's hope that this works then. All right, no more collisions. Go ahead and turn ourselves around. Oh, yeah, that works great. Turning is so effective. I'm really glad that I that I thought of this method here because this is a really nice turning method. I was thinking about just using like a normal rudder turning method, like putting one rudder over on this end here and then one over there. But this actually, I like this a lot better. All right, so now let's see. Let's find the sweet spot of speed and see how fast we can get this thing to go. I actually didn't look at how fast were we going. 18. All right, we seem to be really hovering around, hovering around the 20 kilometer mark. I don't know 
if we have, if there's like a limit there, like some arbitrary limit or something. Right, let's go to 3.4 is what we were successful with before. Oh, wow. 3.4 is just, it just doesn't work with this. That's kind of crazy how just, just taking away that center portion has made such a huge difference in the amount of effect, the amount of torque that the speed seems to have. Let's go to three. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, you know what? This is annoying me. I, I feel like we should be able to go faster. So I'm just going to sacrifice some aesthetics for the sake of just adding more pontoons. We're going to put some pontoons on the outside of this thing towards the back. Okay, you know what? I'm even going for a large pontoon. We're going to we're gonna go all in here. We're just going to put a large... Oh, man, this thing is this thing is excessive. Just going to put a large pontoon right... That actually doesn't look too bad. I mean, it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look too bad. Look at that. That is insane. All right, that should keep us... That should keep us above the water. There we go. And we're going slower. We're going even slower. You know what? Let's increase the speed. We, the more torque that we create, then the more our back end is going to dip in. All right, now let's go up to four. I'm thinking that now four is actually going to work. Oh, oh, we broke 20. 22, 22. We're, we're speeding now. Can you feel the wind in your hair? <laughs> I can see it in my scarf. That's how fast we're going. Our scarf is blowing in the wind. Can we still turn? We can still turn. Man, what a grueling pace we're at here, aren't we? Oh, man. You know what? Let's uh, let's add some aesthetics to this thing. We'll make it look a little bit better. We're not. I'm not going to make it look like a river paddle boat. I'm just going to add my own whatever I decide to do. And uh, then we're just going to see how it affects the speed. I don't know what to... I honestly don't know what to expect. I don't know what I'm doing here. But uh, let's see you on the other side. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the uh, boat. And this is what it looks like now. I don't know what I was doing. I was just adding a bunch of parts to it until I got something. And this is what I got. A, it's not the most aerodynamic thing, but uh, aesthetically, I kind of like, I just added some like spiky horn type things onto it. I don't know. I don't know. I just put parts down that I think would fit well and then see what happens. And that's what happened with this. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Make sure it still works. Everything seems to work. We're going to try to make it go faster because we have more weight on the front, meaning I think we can bump up the speed a little bit without the back end dipping under the water too much. So let's give that a try. All right, so we're at four. Let's go for 4.6, I guess, because that's where I landed. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. 23. We've added a barely a kilometer per hour there. All right, I'm going to try to turn to the right. Oh, there we go. Turn into the right now. That's weird. Okay, something strange, actually. I can turn to the left, 
while pressing W, but I can't turn to the right while pressing W. I actually have to let go completely. I don't know why that is. I guess I must have messed up a logic connection, but I've actually hidden my logic underneath the seat, so that was really smart of me, wasn't it? All right, but the paddles work. They actually work to create a, a river paddle boat type thing. But uh, it, it's a weird looking river, river paddle boat, I give you that. But it works. It serves the purpose. We can turn left and right. Like we can, we can pretty much, we have full control except going backwards does that. We can't go backwards, but we can turn left. We can turn right. We can go forward. We can pretty much do anything that we really need to do unless we kind of hit something head on, in which case we're just gonna have to flip over. But I've been wanting to do the paddle boat since these paddles have come out into the game. So let me know what you guys thought of the paddle boat and let me know if you have any suggestions of future builds that you'd like to see me experiment with on other Trail Makers episodes. I hope you've been enjoying this content and if you are, I hope I've earned your subscription. I uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the comments on what kind of suggestions you have. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.